Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. What a beautiful morning. I'm fishing on the Grand Union Canal at Hatton near Warwick. I thought I'd set myself a bit of a challenge today and leave the pole at home. And I'm fishing a bit old school on the canal, fishing with a waggler and a small little ground bait feeder. And this is actually the first decent fish I've hooked. I just had a small perch and um, I actually lost a bream on the feeder early on in a snag. So I'm just going to concentrate on netting this fish. Oh, that's nice. It's a good bream. Yeah, I started on a little feeder and um, I was getting indications and uh, hooked a nice bream only for it to get stuck in a snag. So I thought I'd just try a waggler um, over the same line and uh, after that small perch I've been rewarded with by this lovely bream. Let's just hold it up for you. What a beautiful fish. Right then, well let's hope. That's a good sign and we'll uh, hopefully be able to catch another. Well, this is a stretch of canal I've fished quite a bit in the past and we shot a really nice video last year, which was at Shrewley, which is up that way towards Knoll. And um, I've selected this area today because as you can see, there's this big turning bay in the canal. And I know from experience that this area, uh, the bream tend to congregate around this area, um, probably for spawning. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to try out a perhaps underused method now on canals, which is fishing with a rod and line and fishing with a small waggler. Obviously, the turning bay here has got to be about 20 metres, 25 metres wide. So there's an area there that would be past the pole line. And um, I kind of just like the idea of fishing like this again. I haven't done it for ages on a canal, so I've been really looking forward to doing it. What's making the job a little bit difficult today is there's a lot of floating weed and I think it's uh, leaves from the blossom and it's making it really difficult to fish with a rod and reel but um, there's another fish and I'm just going to make sure I keep the rod up because there's definitely a snag or something on the bottom I could feel it when I was playing that last fish but I think I've got out of the way now so oh that's good. Another nice bream. So I said I, I started on a little feeder and my idea there was I just wanted to get a little bit of ground bait out into the swim. I clipped up so I knew I was dropping it in the same spot and I've just been loose feeding a few casters so I'm not feeding much to start with but uh, this is a great sign to have a couple of fish like this quite quickly and um, obviously I lost that one on the feeder as well so not sure if this is a bream or a hybrid. There's a lot of hybrids in the canal now and they definitely tend to fight a bit harder. No, I think it's just a, a good sized bream. Nice. Yeah, great one. And uh, I think this one's a male because um, it's got lots of spawning nodules on its head. I actually think the fish have spawned already. But there we go. I'm not sure if uh, Chappie can pick up on that, but they have a like a rough, almost sandpaper feel to them when they when they've spawned or when they've finished spawning. Let's get him in the net. That's great fun. Definitely makes a change catching bream like that on a little waggler and an 11 foot rod. You can see all the bits of blossom that are catching on the, on the line and I'm having to 
sporadically just remove it because what it's doing is it's building up in the in the guides and restricting the casting it's like a it's almost like a fine string that should do it one thing it's made me do is I've actually increased the size of my float a little bit to help me sort of cast a bit easier the distance I'm casting at the moment is probably about 14 to 16 meters and I suppose that's another good advantage about fishing a waggler like this on the canal maybe if you haven't got a, a really good quality long pole obviously I'm fishing further out than 13 meters so it's definitely a useful method There we go, just topped up with another five or six casters. I think that was a bite. Because of this weed on the surface as well, I'm not being able to sink the line. So sometimes I think the movement on the water is just moving the flow, but I'll try and get that back into position. Well, we started quite early this morning because uh, we, we wanted to sort of beat the boat traffic and I absolutely love fishing at this time in the morning. There's another fish. It's so peaceful. There's the odd train behind us with the railway line, but apart from that, it's just the birds singing and it's absolutely beautiful. I'll briefly mention the rods in 11 foot and it's a CR10 11 foot number one and as you can see it's absolutely beautiful for this kind of fishing it's got a lovely soft action don't need a long match rod when you're fishing on a canal it's only about two foot deep where I'm fishing you can see I've got trees above me so a short 11 foot rod really helps and it's just a joy to use I can fish fine with confidence and it's a very, very versatile rod. There we go. That's another bream. Wow. It's amazing how prolific the canals are nowadays. I think they really have thrived on neglect and I just love uh, targeting these quality fish. And when I was growing up, we'd be targeting um, smaller fish on the on this canal mainly gudgeon and rough and small roach but a bream like that would have been something that i'd really been talking about but it's a bit smaller perhaps about two pound that one absolutely brilliant I'll just show you my waggler rig, which is really, really simple. 
So taking it through from the reel, which is a 3000 CS10 reel, which balances lovely with the 11 foot number one rod. Um, I've spooled that up with 015 Pro Gold, which has a braking strain of around about two and a half pound line. So it's not really heavy. Um, the reason for that is obviously I'm using quite light floats. So if you're using a heavier main line, you'd struggle to cast the floats. Um, the float I'm using at the moment is this old 3BB. It's a peacock waggler with a peacock insert. And um, it's a lovely float. It's very slim and sensitive with this, this insert, which is obviously what you want to do. You know, we're not fishing at long range, we're fishing in shallow water. And by shotting that correctly, you can really read the bites and it'll be sensitive enough if you're going to fish with a bit finer and smaller baits as well. So I've got the bulk of the shot, the 3BB around the float, and all I've got down the line is, at the moment, three number 10s. I've got two number 10s around about half depth and one number 10 just above my hook length. And uh, we'll perhaps talk about that next time I go on the Waggler, I'll explain about the shotting pattern in a bit more detail. Um, hook length I'm using is this 0 0.97, 0 0.10 um, Vest Pro, which would have a braking strain of around about a pound and a half. So again, I'm trying to fish with some finesse, not as fine as perhaps I would have done in days gone by when we were fishing for smaller fish, big bags of little roach and gudgeon. I'd have been fishing even finer, but you know, you've seen the quality of the bream that we're catching. So I think that's a good compromise. And the hook is a size 20 B560. And I've been using single and double red maggot and that's worked quite well. So that's the actual float and rig that I'm using at the moment. I just thought I'd reference some of the old floats that we used to use. Um, these are Billy making Canal Greys and they're absolutely beautiful floats. They're actually made from balsa, so it's shaped balsa. And you can see there, that's, I think that one's a three number four. So it's a very, very small capacity, very delicate float. And back in the day, you know, before poles, people would fish with floats like this and even fish close in. So that's what the smaller floats were used for, for perhaps fishing just a rod length out or out towards the middle of the canal. And then as you were fishing further over, you'd go up to 2BB, um, 3 and 4BB. So I'll maybe give those a go later, but at the moment I'm quite happy with my peacock waggler with the peacock insert. Well, what's really helped is this nice breeze just uh, started up and it's started to blow all this uh, floating stuff away from the far bank and I've got a lovely clean area now and that's really helping. I'm straight back in with another fish. Often with sessions like this, they are quick sessions on a canal because when the boat traffic starts up and uh, the canal starts really towing, it can be a bit more difficult to fish, certainly with a, a little waggler like this. That was my thinking with the feeder. I'll just get him in, nice one. Obviously with a feeder and a static bait, if the canal does start to tow, that should enable me to keep fishing. That's the advantage of a pole, is you can actually hold your rig in position when the canal starts towing. But uh, I'm not complaining with this fishing at the moment, it's amazing. And even if we just do get two or three hours fishing before everybody wakes up, that one's a little bit tatty, perhaps it has finished spawning. The, fish really go through the mill when they're spawning, crashing through all the reeds and you, you often see them right up in the brambles and in the, in the weeds. So that's why I think they get damaged like that, but they soon heal up. Good old slimy bream.
Well, here's the first boat of the day. Let's hope it doesn't upset the fishing too much. Morning. Good, thanks. Beautiful, isn't it? Morning. It's amazing. Few bream, yeah. Well, I just found this, hooked this part of that snag and got it out. Monty's quite fond of it. But uh, just shows you obviously on a canal, you gotta face a few challenges like that. But um, I hadn't got a fish, I just was just fishing in the same area and I just obviously caught it and uh, hopefully by moving it I haven't spooked the fish but uh, at least we got most of it out of the way. Well, the feeder rod I'm using is the nine foot number two. And um, I'm gonna cast this further up into the turning bay, away from where I was catching those bream. My thinking is I wanna just establish another line further over in the turning bay. And that's the great advantage of this peg. There's quite a lot of options really. Um, it looks quite deep when you think about it being a turning bay, but actually, I plumbed up at the start and the further you go in towards that turning bay, the shallow it gets gradually. And it's only about a foot, sort of, I don't know, past the middle of that, of that turning bay. Um, as you come back towards the main canal, it just gradually deepens off and then there's quite a defined ledge. Um, so I think I'm just gonna try the feeder over there and I might also start feeding another line over to the left. At the moment, I've got a lot of this floating debris again. So it's gonna make it difficult there at the moment, but hopefully with time, it's just giving me another option. 
think I mentioned it at the start that this feed is also going to be useful if we get a lot of flow as the perhaps the boat traffic picks up so just gives us another option. I'm actually gonna So it's not a conventional way of fishing on the canal really but I think it's uh, interesting to try different methods out and certainly where you've got a wider canal like this bit here and this peg definitely worth a go. Well there's a couple more boats coming now and uh, as predicted I think the boat traffic might increase so that was for the reason of um, coming early this morning and grabbing a quick session. It's often the way when you're canal fishing. I'm going to just let everything settle down after these boats, persevere with the feeder for a couple more casts and then hopefully try and pick one up on the waggler just at the end of the session. Oh yeah. No, thank you very much. Cheers. That's great. A few nice ones, yeah. Yeah. Here's a quick tip for you when you're waggler fishing on a canal like this today and when you've got a, a crosswind that can affect the float by dragging it off course, um, you want to sink the line and uh, I still bring some diluted washing up liquid with me and at the start of the session before I thread the rod ring, the line through the rod rings then I'll just apply some of that and obviously that will soak into the spool and into the line and just take the shine and the grease off the line just to help it sink or certainly help it to sink quicker. Okay, the ground bait I've used today is a mix of two bait tech ground baits. Um, Pro Natural Bream, dark, and I've mixed that 50% with this um, juice ground bait from Bait Tech. So it's a lovely sweet mix, but we've got an added fish meal flavor as well, which is obviously really popular now for targeting bream like we are today. And it's a lovely mix. You can mix it dry like it is now or just add a bit of water to firm it up a bit. But as I'm only fishing in shallow water, I'm just uh, using that mix like that, just adding a few casters and I've been adding some dampened micro pellets. These are actually uh, sweet fish meal um, sticky pellets as well from uh, Evolve Baits. And I think they're really good. I like to do that when I'm catching bream. So basically, just make a mix of that and that's uh, going to form a ball that I can throw out nice and easily into position um, and it's not going to be too hard, it's not going to perhaps roll down the ledge, it's going to break down nice and quickly. And it's also a, a great mix for fishing through the feeder so I'm actually using it in the feeder as well. So hook baits for today, it's just a quick session so I just bought half a pint of casters and a pint of red maggots and um, I've always got a can of corn with me just in case. On some really great red letter days on the canal I've caught bream and carp on corn but uh, we'll maybe try that at some point today. <laughs> yeah I've had some nice bream yeah. Good. Yeah. What am I going to look for online? On YouTube. Oh. Cadence, Cadence Fishing. Oh, yeah. Cheers, see you later. We well, had a couple of quick casts on the feeder and um, not had a bite, so I'm glad that we did come early this morning. It's definitely gone a bit quiet. Um, that's the feeder rig. That's a, a small 10 gram Drennan cage feeder and I'm fishing that as a bolt rig there between a shot and a gripper stop running over the top of a loop and uh, I'm only fishing quite a short hook length, what's that, perhaps uh, a foot, a foot and a half and um, I started off, I actually put a, two or three decent feeder fulls of ground bait out um, on the line where I've been catching on the waggler 
Um, obviously because I can feed the ground bait through the feeder very accurately and uh, loose feed casters over the top. But once I've actually fished it, I've switched to that smaller feeder because I want to be as subtle as I can, not making too much disturbance on the cast. So um, it's obviously a good backup method on the canal when you're fishing a waggler like we are today. And uh, one that I've had a great deal of success on in the past, actually caught nearly over a hundred pound of bream. Um, a little bit further along on this stretch on a feature that I did a few years ago and I caught all of them on the feeder so again that's perhaps a method that's a bit neglected on canals. Alright let's have a, another go on the waggler and uh, I'll just sort of give you a bit of background to my thinking about how I fished it today. Um, when I got here I plumbed the depth um, obviously that's a lot easier to do on a pole, a bit more difficult on a waggler. You don't want to be casting a, a plummet out. So all I did was I just pinched a, a BB shot onto my um, hook. And uh, I'll just do it now and I'll show you. So I've just pinched that BB on the hook and that'll enable me to be able to cast out normally without making a great disturbance from a big plummet. And in my mind, in this situation, I'm not going to be able to get as accurate a depth as, say, if you were fishing with a pole. I'm not really too bothered, really, because I'm not fishing in such a tight area. I'm intentionally spreading my bait around. I think that's important when you're targeting bream like we are today on a canal, they're not going to be all shoulder up in a very tight spot. And um, I'm fishing slightly over depth as well. I've been fishing up to six inches over depth and just by casting that float and overshotted with a BB, you can see there that the float's out the water so it's not overshotted by the BB. So I know there that I'm fishing on the bottom. Once I'd established that depth in the area I was going to fish, I like to just take a reference against my rod rings. And uh, my hook's in the keeper ring. And I know that, that the depth is around about the third guide on my rod. So I'm not being as precise as perhaps I would with the pole and mark it with tipex. That's close enough because I can adjust my float and my shotting pattern accordingly, depending on things like the toe and a skim um, around that area that we're, we've been catching. So I talked about the rig and um, I think that's important as well. I've not got a lot of weight down. I've just got three number 10 shots. Um, obviously it's not deep and it's not like I need to really anchor the bait on the bottom. Um, but what those three number 10 shot are allowing me to do is really read and register the bites on the float. Um, I talked about this insert peacock waggler and I actually used that in preference today over the famous canal greys um, because I'm actually casting a little bit further. I'm casting probably 14 to 16 metres out and the extra capacity of that float is really helping over the canal greys. And also, I really love this visible tip. That's really helping me to, at times, slightly undershot it and adjust my shotting so that I can really read the bites. And another key thing about that is, the two number, two number 10 shot that I've got, say if I was cast in to a slightly different area and it was shallower, those two shot would be on the bottom and that would register very clearly. So I'd have more of the float showing. So it's kind of like a, a quick way of just checking that you're fishing in the right sort of depth when you're fishing a waggler like this on a canal. And all the bites were really positive. So it's been working well. And as we come into the end of the session, end of this quick session now, I'm probably going to just have another 10 or 15 minutes, see if I can sneak one more. And if I don't, then I've had a fantastic morning already and I shall get back home and do some work. Well, I didn't get any more bites on the waggler or the feeder. 
obviously moving that snags disturbed the shoulder bream and they've disappeared but uh, I've absolutely loved fishing like that today on the canal, fishing the waggler and the small feeder. It's brought back lots of memories from the past and I'm um, really pleased to catch those four nice bream. I think it just emphasises you know this time of year fishing early in the morning before everybody wakes up and the canal gets busy it's definitely a big advantage. I really do enjoy that, fishing early before work as well, so I better get on it now and get to the warehouse and ship some orders. Thanks for watching.